for a guy that might want to run for president, what is he going to do when he gets to Washington? Are people going to move there too? I don't know. But is it all about the governor or is it just that people love to come to Florida to tie up our roads? Think about it. Shenyun, a performance that truly matters to every one of us, is coming March 7th through April 2nd to Mahaffey Theater, St. Petersburg, and RP Funding Center, Lakeland. Shenyun revives 5,000 years of civilization through choreographed dance, music combining Western and Chinese instruments, and dynamic 3D backdrop. Come and see it once in your lifetime. Tickets at shenyun.com slash FL. Do you have questions after being injured in a car accident or injured because of someone's negligence? Do you feel overwhelmed or uncertain about the next steps after being injured in a crash? The personal injury attorneys at Paranek, Caulfield, Averill, and Noyes have been helping their injured clients since 1955 and are now on this radio station to provide guidance to you. Listen to FLA Law each Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Let their decades of experience help you and your family. Offices in Clearwater, non-attorney spokesman. Hello there, Tampa Bay. This is former NFL and college football coach Jimmy Johnson. Listen to the Kelly Kelly Show every Monday starting at 5 p.m. We can sure use the attention. And this is former Major League Baseball player, Hall of Famer Wade Boggs. I also hope you listen to the Kelly Kelly Show every Monday starting at 5 p.m. They can darn sure use the money. Hi there. This is Marine Wildlife Artist and Conservationist, Dr. Guy Harvey. Please listen to the Kelly Kelly Show every Monday starting at 5 p.m. They need to feel worthy. Caregivers find the support they need on Connecting Caregivers Radio with Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for the caregiver. Heard every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m., Linda and her caring and knowledgeable guests will bring you education, information, and resources, as well as a shoulder for caregivers. That's Connecting Caregivers Radio with Linda Burhans, the gal who cares for the caregiver, where you can find help and hope every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. right here on the Tantalk Radio Network. It's rich, refreshing, and rewarding. Tune in every Wednesday from 9 to 10 p.m. for the positive, powerful, and provocative Rich Kemp Live radio show. Your host, Bahamian empowermentalist Rich Kemp, will spend the hour empowering you to empower you. You don't want to miss this uplifting hour every Wednesday from 9 to 10 p.m. That's Rich Kemp Live on the Tan Talk Radio Network. And visit his website, rlkemp.com. We're back in Dade City. Your adventure begins at the Bay Area Renaissance Festival. Eight stages of exciting and hilarious entertainment. <laughs> Full contact, live armor jousting, mermaids, fairies, pirates, Vikings, and more. Endless shopping at more than a hundred different artesian booths. The Bay Area Renaissance Festival. Family fun for all. Weekends, February 19th through April 3rd. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now at BayAreaRenFest.com. Tampa Bay's Tan Talk. Entertaining and informative radio for the Sunshine State. March 20, March 29th. The Chapters Network and the Tan Talk Radio Network proudly present from 6 to 6.30, Drive Time with host Steve Vaccaro. Special guest television radio host Steve Malzberg and singer-songwriter Peter Barron. From 6.30 to 7, Worth the Price of Admission with host Jill Martin. Special guest, co-founder of Grassroots Baseball, President Jeff Idelson, and Sony Artisan sports photographer Gene Fruit. From 7 to 7.30, The Ozone. With your host, former Major League Baseball player Orestes Destrada. From 7.30 to 8, reach out with host, New York Yankees community consultant, Rain Negro, Frankie Valley's musical director, Robbie Robinson, and psychologist, Steve Acaro, co-host, Santiago Pinkney, special guest, Brooke Green, Liliana, and Tina Nichols. That's coming up Wednesday, March 29th, live on the Chapters Network and the Tan Talk Radio Network. Radio! People all over the world! He's leaving, leaving. Oh, that big black train, baby, on the downtown train. Come on, baby, let's go listen to the night train. Come on, baby. 
Don't touch that dial. The chapters wrap with psychologist Steve Vaccaro starts, starts now. now. This is Chapters Wrap Drive Time Live, and again, we start with another mass shooting in Nashville, and our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts go out to these six individuals, these six angels that lost their lives, Evelyn Dykehouse, Haley Scruggs, William Kinney, Cynthia Peak, Mike Hill, and Catherine Kuntzi. I The world, the country is devastated. This is the 13th, 14th, or 15th, 16th, I mean, lost count, mass shooting since the beginning of the year. I've been doing this show on the network for 10 years, and I feel like we've been doing this all each and every week. And we're going to bring Steve Malsborg on in a second. I'm sure he has his thoughts and comments and share some up-to-date information on what's going on. But first, I have to start off with some good news. Let's bring Anna on to the show real quick. It's all about good news. Anna is Alpha 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 on a roll. Uh, 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 at her school, Montclair State. Anna, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Anna. Thank you, Steve. We can't hear you, but I'm sure that you're ecstatic of it, your great <laughs> news and the great work that you're doing. No, apparently, I mean, I'm speaking. My mic is all on and stuff, so. Um, there you go. You're good to go. Congratulations. You're working very hard. Congratulations on your honor. Thank you so much. I mean, like, I graduated Montclair almost a good seven years ago. But um, the good thing about Tri Alpha is that they honor even alumna that are first generation students um, within their families to go to college. And, you know, it's just something that I know that as soon as I saw it, I was like, I need to, I need to apply. And thankfully, I made it. <laughs> and you're doing it for your brother and your family. God bless you, Anna, for all the great work that you do. Thank we, you. Couldn't do we couldn't do anything without you. So thank you very, very much. God bless you. And thank I know you got you. a lot of work to do. And uh, we'll see you at that graduate that ceremony tomorrow night. I can't yes. wait. Thank you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is Chapters Wrap Live. If you want to join in, please do. It's 727-441-3000. I was also at the Yankee game the other day, the last spring training game at George M. Steinbrenner Field. Yankees beat the Rays. Sorry, you Tampa, Tampa Bay fans. But somebody engaged. They, they got engaged right then and there on the Yankee dugout. Odie and Kerry got engaged. And it was such a great sight because it – Sometimes it happens at a ball game. Sometimes you see it, but you never get the chance to meet the people. So, Odie and Carrie, are you there? Yeah, we're here, Steve. Congratulations, my man. Great job. Well done. Well, it was, it was, a, it was definitely a great day with a great woman and, and a great atmosphere, so that's for sure. So when did you come up with this idea that you're going to do it at a Yankee game? 
<laughs> uh, making final final plans for it. Um, you know, like the week before, you know, kind of finalizing. I had some I- different ideas, and and I've been a Yankee fan growing up, and and had planned this trip months and months ago, and and uh, anyway, the stars just aligned, and and decided to make it happen that day. So, were you nervous? Absolutely, yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> and and Carrie, you had Carrie, to- you had no idea what was going to happen. No, I had no idea. In fact, the funniest part was right at the beginning of the fifth inning, I went to, to take a bathroom break and then about gave him a heart attack because the middle of the fifth is when they were going to make the announcement. <laughs> Carrie, you almost messed it up. I know. I know. I Odie, almost missed it. You must have been I freaking out, Odie, right? You must have been freaking <laughs> out. Oh, yeah, I was definitely freaking out, so. I mean, I was a bundle of nerves the whole game. I was quiet, which is not usually like me, and and just nervous about the whole thing. And then she tells me she needs to go to the bathroom, and, and I'm like, okay, well, this better work out. And it did, so it was great. Well, it was meant to be. God bless. And, of course, you said yes. You had shirts made up. I asked, number three. I said yes. Number 27. Doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. Yeah, it was a good day. Agreed. <laughs> Well, God bless you guys. We're going to spend a few moments with you. And because we there's so much bad news going out there, I had to share some good news. So we love you very much. And God bless you. And we'll definitely see you down the road real soon. All right. Well, thanks for letting us be a part of your show. And, and thanks for advertising. We, we appreciate it. It was a good day. All right. Carrie and Odie got engaged at the Yankee game, the last spring training game in Tampa. It was a great sight. But let's bring Steve Malsborg on because we don't have a lot of time on this drive time show. And – what happened in Nashville is sickening, and change has to be made. Wouldn't you agree, Steve? It, it, it was sickening. It was awful. It was horrible. Um, I think that um, what's going on in its aftermath is um, is not so great either. Uh, right away, of course, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's blame the gun. Um, if this had been a a, a, a school with black children in it and a white person went in and shot it up, they would have called it a hate crime. Here we have a trans person who went back to the school they used to attend, a, a Christian school. And um, we keep hearing from the police chief that she left. Today we found out about a 60-page notebook manifesto. So what's in it? Oh, we're looking. Oh, we're looking at it. Oh, you know, how how long does it take to read a 60 page notebook? It's been two full days plus. OK, and you have on the record, according to Newsweek.com, um, Newsday.com. Well, Newsday or Newsweek. And now now I'm confusing myself. Uh, just before I came on, I saw a story online from them quoting the heads of, of LGBT groups and trans groups saying, oh, no, we don't we shouldn't show what's in the uh, the manifesto it, it would it's a distraction it'll 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 take us away from the main topic no no <laughs> how could it take us away from the main topic we need to know uh if this was a hateful act and of course it was a hateful act was it targeting christians of course it targeted christians but nobody wants to talk about that if it targeted blacks if it targeted jews if it targeted muslims that's all you'd be hearing about but it targeted christians and nobody wants to talk about that you also have Um, Today, the press secretary for the governor of Arkansas had to resign because she, in response to a tweet, tweeted out a tweet of her own, a woman with a gun, aiming a gun, saying, uh, us, when we see a transphobe, I guess she's trans herself, I don't know, uh, or not, but she had to resign immediately after, almost immediately after posting that that tweet. In other words, endorsing violence. You also have a group uh, that's called for a day of vengeance uh, at outside the Supreme Court on Saturday. And it is uh, run or advertised by a group called the Trans Radical Activist Network. Um, So there's a lot going on here. Don't forget, Tennessee, just the governor just signed a law against drag shows and against other other limitations on uh, transitioning, uh, you know, medically young children. Uh, that was very recently. And then you have this shooting. So we have to know what's in that manifesto. 
And we have to have a conversation about it beyond make more laws that will prohibit more law abiding citizens from getting guns. I mean, you could you could ban every you could ban every weapon that's out there and the criminals always going to get a gun. You're only punishing and limiting law abiding citizens. When it comes to keeping kids safe in schools, you need to increase security in schools. You need to have doors that are locked, only one door that opens from the outside, uh, letting kids in. And like in Texas and elsewhere, if teachers want to train and carry guns in the school, it's a deterrent. This woman had another target, we're told, but she felt that the security was too tight at that other target. So she went where she knew there would be no guns and no resistance. But, but, but Steve, she shot through the door. Was it, the door that was, was locked. a glass door. Yeah, that was a glass door. She right. shattered the glass and opened the door. We need, we need better security, better doors. I mean, well, the, 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 this is a Christian school. So, so maybe the security is not up to par where a public school setting may be. I don't know. I don't know. But the things that are coming about week after week, I mean, what do you attribute this to? How do we stop this trend or can we stop it? Well, I mean, it, it, it depends what you're, you know, it, it, mass shootings, when you have somebody who's willing to commit suicide after doing something like this, who's willing to go into that school knowing they're not coming out, it's very, or a shopping mall or wherever, it's very hard to stop. There's no law you could pass that's going to stop that. The only logical alternative is to make as many places undesirable targets as possible. And that's by arming people within those facilities. So the person will look for a different facility or think twice and, and not say it's probably not worth it. I'm going to get shot right away. Uh, yeah, it, it, It's a sick way of thinking, but that's, you have to, you know, they're, they're, they're crazy, but they're not stupid. They know they're going to get glory of their name uh, and coverage. But but it's interesting. When we had that uh, driver run down and kill six people at the Wisconsin Christmas Parade two years ago, and one was a, one was an eight-year-old boy. There was also an elderly woman and another child. That, that story, once it came out, he was a black driver uh, who had BLM stuff on his, uh, on his Facebook and all. That story wasn't covered again until... He was convicted and sentenced a year or so later. Why? Why did that go away? So in a way, I'm shocked that this is a trans shooter and it's getting all this coverage. But on the other hand, they're kind of either ex excusing it, the media, or not focusing on that it's trans and just focusing like a laser beam on the gun. We got to know, just like we'd have to know from a black shooter or a white shooter shooting up black people, vice versa. We can't ignore that this there was a motive here. And to say, oh, they can't figure out the motive. Are you kidding me? Let's see the manifesto. 60 pages. It doesn't take that long to read. This is the Chapters Wrap live here, 727-441-3000. Talking to Steve Walsberg about the whole Nashville thing. And when you look at Uvalde and you look at uh, what, ha what just happened, the police waited around for over an hour in Uvalde, and they, the police here in Nashville went right in. But before you comment, we have a caller. Are the, is the caller there? Diane. Diane, are you there, Diane? Yes. What's your thoughts about what happened in Nashville and what Steve's talking about? Uh, I hear what Steve's talking about, and I understand his point of view, and I'm sure he has much more expertise than I do. I'm just, I'm just a nurse. I'm just a mom, I'm, you know. Uh, but I did want to say that uh, a couple of things. One, I felt that the police responded uh practically immediately this time from what we're being told, which in my mind makes them heroes. And I'm grateful for their presence there that day, that they responded so quickly and were able to save lives. And I really would like to, um, you know, honor them and, and thank, thank them, you know, uh, from the bottom of my heart for, for what they did, uh, being a first responder and rushing in towards the gunfire, preventing more loss of life. And I feel, you know, I, I just want to make that point. Um, the, the point I think is like, I'm in, it might sound simple. Okay. But maybe, you know, I'm just a simple person, but I'm on the side of these kids living. Uh, I'm, I'm on the side of looking at what we can do to prevent this from happening again. And quite frankly, it happens with Sandy Hook. Um, you know, more close, you know, that was in Connecticut. I'm in New, I'm in New York. Okay. And we were outraged then. 
and they were children and they were massacred and as were some adults and it just boggles the mind that all these years later and all these other mass shootings later we still haven't come up with some solution I, 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 like I say, I'm not an expert, so I don't know what that solution is. Um, I, I tend to think that the uh, ban we had on assault weapons, if you look at the data, not guns per se, but the assault rifle itself, that the data suggests that that did, in fact, lower killings by, by that type of weapon, which was the type of weapon that this... Um, the latest mass shooting right. uh, use. Right. So, you know, I, well, I don't have any clear cut answers. Well, I, pre- uh, and- Diane, I appreciate your comments and thoughts, and uh, we're almost running out of time here. Steve, what, gotcha. you want to comment on uh, what yeah. Diane said? Thank uh, you for yeah, calling, no, Diane. You're not a little person. You're, 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 you, you do wonderful work. You said you're a nurse and a mother, by the way, which is the most important job uh, that you could have. But no, look. Um, uh, you're right, but you know what? Let's not lose sight of all the the kids that are shot and murdered in the streets of, of our cities, okay? Where crime is out of control. And those people uh, who do the shooting, they're not out to get killed and commit suicide. And when they get arrested, they're let out to do it again. So what we have to do is have mandatory sentences for anybody who commits a crime with a gun, lock them up. It acts as a deterrent because these people don't want to go to jail for years. They know they're not going to go to jail. So it's a deterrent. And if they uh, do do it, they go to jail and they're off the streets. So we shouldn't just get lost in these tragedies where it's in a school, it's in a supermarket, it's in a... I mean, kids are getting killed all over the place with handguns. So once they ban assault weapons, they're going to come. And I've seen also, I've already seen uh, segments before this shooting on CNN and elsewhere about handguns. That's their goal is to take away our guns. Right. 727-441-3000 is Chapters Wrap Live. We're talking to Steve Malsberg and everything that would happen in Nashville. So, Steve, you're talking about why one group gets more attention than the other, but how do we come to some sort of resolution with this moving forward? Because this country is polarized to begin with. How do we all come together? Because there's over 16 times this has happened since 2023 began. If you have people who are going to who are willing to die for what they're going to do and they have weapons, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, this woman, she had seven weapons. She was undergoing, undergoing mental illness treatment. But right. she, they keep saying that her the, the parents and the daughter, she was 28 years old. Yeah, she lived in the house, but she's a, she's an adult. She's not like a little kid under their care. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how much they are to blame. I, I just think, again. You got to have better security. If we if we have security at airports, um, why shouldn't we have security at schools? I mean, right. I, I heard Jessica Tarloff on Fox News say you're taking away the the, the child the, the childhood of these kids if you have the armed people in the schools and daycare centers. Really? So you rather right. have this? I mean, you, you got to protect the, where the children are. And hold tight, Steve. Hold tight, Steve. We have another caller. Uh, there's a caller there, Victoria. Victoria, you there? Yeah. You want to comment yeah, on what we're talking about? Tell me a little bit about, I missed a, uh, a little bit of what was going on. I think in Nashville, about, what's your thoughts about what went down in Nashville? Uh, I think that it's very, very sad. The country is where it's at. And, you know, I really don't know if with the shooter and all the information that's coming out. I, I just, I feel it's really difficult because you have, you know, these innocent children that have nothing to do with why this even happened. Right, right. You know? Uh, uh, Victoria, thank you for calling in. Uh, Steve, I'm sure well, on your shows, on your podcasts, on your work that you do, you're going to hear more and more of this as the story unfolds. But what is, where do we pivot? What do we need to do first? What we need to do first, like I said, is when if we're talking about schools, is secure the schools, is secure the locations, give more people the chance, good guys, to have guns in schools and shopping malls and everywhere else. Because statistically, 
And I've gotten this from people like John Lott. Statistically, the mass shooters go to where they know it's a gun-free zone, where they know they're going to have time to get away with killing as many people as possible. That's where they go. So take that away. Um, and and that's, that's step number one. I, I don't know what other answers. We just passed... The, the, the Congress just passed a, a, a Biden gun reform bill. I mean, you know, again, you're not going to stop the criminal by passing more anti-gun laws or, you know, making this gun illegal or that gun illegal. The criminal will always find a way. And if they don't right. use an assault weapon, they'll use something else. And then they'll say, oh, now it's handguns. Now we have to do to handguns what we did to assault weapons. And don't think that's not what the left's goal is. So the answer is, Make the schools safe. Make them safe for our children by arming teachers who want to be armed and training them and locking that place up so that during the day, no one who doesn't belong there could get in and, and enter. Steve Walsberg, thank you very much for joining us uh, week after week. You do great work. My pleasure, and Steve. Unfortunately, we got to band together somehow. And uh, right, God bless you. you. Thank you for taking the time always for supporting our show. God bless you, my man. Take care, Steve. See you. Uh, we're, we're done here. Uh, stick around for Worth the Price of Admission with Jill Martin. God bless you guys. Be safe. You strung me along for far too long because I never gave up the fight. I'm the 2015 All-Star Game features the four greatest living baseball players. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Johnny Bench, Sandy Koufax, and Willie Mays, who are all absolutely amazing players in their own right. But I'm in the room sitting next to my grandfather, Yogi Berra. And I'm thinking, wait a second. He's got more MVPs than any of these guys. He's won more World Series rings than all four of them combined. And I look at him and I said, are you dead? And he said, not yet one of the greatest World Series resumes of any player ever. Hey, he got it done. He was a winner because he had all the rings to prove it. He's the figure that was larger than life. There's no Jackie without the acceptance of Yogi Berra. When Yogi comes to the team, they say he doesn't look like a Yankee. He wasn't six foot three with blonde hair. Everything about him was kind of funny. He was a character. He was made fun of in the New York press. But that sort of became who Yogi Berra was, this funny little guy. That's right, Yogi Berra. I don't think Yogi liked it too much.